Hi, this is Andrew with the eLearning Brothers. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create a drag and drop interaction in Adobe Captivate. And drag and drop is a feature that Adobe has added to later versions of Captivate 6 and Captivate 7. They're super easy to create and they're an awesome way to add some fun and interactivity to your courses. So right here I have a course open in Captivate 6 with each object that I'm going to use my interaction on the stage. So I have these four pictures, which are going to be the objects that the user will drag to the targets which are these dotted outline boxes. So we'll go up to Insert, Launch Drag and Drop Interaction Wizard, and that will bring up the screen that will allow us to edit our interaction. Now on the top left we can see that we're on step one of three which is to specify the drag sources. And those are going to be the objects that the user will drag to the drop target. And those are our pictures, so we'll shift, grab all four of those. And in this next section, Captivate allows you to group each object to a type. Now you'd use this if you wanted to group several drag sources to one drop target, but since we're only doing one-on-one, -on -one, we can skip that for now. We'll click Next. Next step is to specify the drop targets, which are our dotted boxes. So we'll shift and grab all four of those. We'll move the Submit button out of the way. Click Next. And the final step is to specify the correct answers. You'll do that by clicking the plus button in the middle of each of your drag sources and dragging that to the correct drop target. So we have our sheep, the frog, and Captivate will automatically snap that blue arrow to the middle of the drop target. And we'll also add a failure text box which you can edit as well. So we'll click finish. And Captivate will add that interaction to our stage and we'll bring up the drag and drop tab over to the right which will allow us to edit our interaction. So we'll click on one of our drag sources. Over here we can see that we have a drag source selected. If we have a type, we can edit that right there. We can specify effects to take place when the user clicks on each one. Down here under interaction properties, you can edit whether you want the hand cursor to appear. Send drag source to original position. We'll send each picture back to where it was dragged from if the user drag drops it anywhere outside of the target area. And you can select audio to play on whenever the user drops the target. And I like to select redrag the drop source. And that'll allow the user to redrag each object that they drop on the target so that the objects don't just stick there. And under action, we can specify actions to take place on success or on failure. However many attempts the user will have, I like to click infinite and then select reset all and then add a reset button. And by selecting reset all, we allow the user to reset the entire interaction so all of the objects will fly back to the original position instead of just one. So those are the options for the drag sources. If we click on one of our boxes, our drop targets, you can see that that's specified right there. We can edit the type. And under drop target, I like to click accept and unclick accept all right here. And that'll make it so each drop target doesn't accept every drag source. It will only accept the correct one. And then I like to click on replace. And that will prevent the user from stacking each image on top of each other. So if a drag source is dropped on a target on top of an, uh, another image, that old image will fly back to where it was originally placed. And we have to do that for each one of our drop targets. I'll click accept all, click replace. And there are a lot of different ways that you can edit the drop targets and the drag sources. Since this is just a quick tutorial, we'll just stick with the basics that we have for now. All right, so we can go up to file and then preview that in the browser. Alright, so we can see that we have each of our objects we can drag, and those will fall into wherever we drop them. If we drag one on top of another, it'll fly back to its original spot. We can also click Reset All, they'll all fly back to where they originally were. And we'll do all the correct answers here. And click Submit, and if you had a, if you click submit and it was incorrect, your failure text that you specified will pop up there. And that's a quick tutorial on how to create a drag and drop interaction in Adobe Captivate.